second ATSSB All-State Etude for 2018-2019, Year C. I hope that that recording, just like the first, helped you get a better sense of what this etude's about. I just have a few comments, uh, a, a few helpful suggestions that hopefully will improve your ability to be able to be successful on this piece and to learn from it. First and foremost, I mentioned this in the first one, while the first one is a lyrical etude and while this one is the technical etude, you got to play beautifully with a beautiful sound and beautiful musical sense on this one, just like you've done on the first one. Again, I have a video on improving your sound because we're gonna be listening to your sound when we're listening to you play these etudes, just like with the first one. So check out my video on improving saxophone sound and get a few pointers there to help you really amp that up on yourself. Now, unlike this one, uh, I'm sorry, unlike the last one, there are only two dynamics in this piece, so you need to make the most out of that little bit of contrast you have in the very beginning, from the forte to the fortissimo. And secondly, you need to be able to keep that intensity in the fortissimo going all the way through the piece. Often, I'll hear younger students especially, their dynamics tend to fall when they get lower, they tend to rise when they get louder, and you really don't need to do that. You need to be able to keep the same level going through. And I would recommend recording yourself and just making sure that that's what you're doing. It'll take some changes in your airstream, it'll take a lot of air, but it'll be worth the effort and it'll be worth the work if you do that throughout. Now, a couple little things to think about through here. Number one, you'll see some little numbers above some notes in here. Completely ignore those. This is also a uh, an oboe etude book and those little numbers are for oboe players. Just completely ignore them as a saxophonist you'll be fine. A few little fingering things to think about through here. In measure five, just like we talked about the bis and the side B flat, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at the first video, the first etude. Uh, you're gonna use in measure five, your bis B flat, as you're doing those nice little runs through there. Now normally if we're going, if we're going step by step, we would use our side B flat like we talked about, but that A flat that you've got tends to complicate matters. It's gonna be much easier to go C, B flat, A flat through there. So go ahead and start working on that. In measures seven and eight, you've got all of these little leaps, all of these little nasty leaps through there. Ah. I just messed up, sorry. But you've got all those nasty little leaps and you need to make sure that you're not moving your embouchure around. Keep your embouchure solid. If you notice throughout, I don't move a thing here. I just don't move a thing. If people tell you to drop your jaw, don't do it, okay? Don't do that on saxophone. Do not drop your jaw for intonation or anything else. We can talk about more later. Just email me, I'll tell you how to adjust intonation without dropping your jaw. Keep it all the same. Get yourself in a mirror. Make sure your hands aren't doing anything crazy. Make sure that you're not seeing any motion around your lower jaw. If there's motion, you're not gonna be able to play that, I promise. If there's no motion, you stand a much better chance. Go slow, work in small chunks with your metronome. If you don't know how to met use a metronome, talk to your band director, talk to me, we can help you out. A couple other little things throughout. In measure 10, again, use your bis B flat. We're doing that kind of leaping around through there. You don't want to use side and then try to go to the F sharp. It's much easier to go A, bis B flat, F sharp through there. In measure 16, make sure that you're pausing for a nice four or five beats. Give yourself a chance to breathe and relax before you start that last little bit. And also, that's what's written. You have a complete bar of rest with a fermato over it. Don't leap back into it after a beat. Measure 17. Again, do not drop your jaw to try to get that C to come out. I, I know people have probably told you, if you drop your jaw in the lower register, it'll help it. 
great. People say that all the time. It's not true at all. The more that you drop your jaw, the less reliable your low range gets. Just keep your embouchure as it is normally. If it won't come out, well, then there are probably a couple things you wanna do. Number one, if you're an alto player, take your mouthpiece off, hit a concert A, so you can get that concert A to come out. If you're a tenor player, it's a G. If you're a berry player, it's a concert D. So that may help you out a little bit there, but do not move your jaw on those lower notes. I hope that these few little pieces of advice have helped uh, to make this an easier task for you. Again, this is, this is difficult. There are a lot of technical problems in this that need to be worked out very slowly with your metronome. Start very slow, I'm talking like 40 on the metronome. Maybe just focus on one or two beats at a time and then move it up from there. But don't rush this. Take your time, go slow, take it easy. You'll have a much better chance of playing this accurately and being successful. Not just winning the, whatever chair that you want, but growing as a saxophonist. Going hand in hand with this, I would say, don't let this be the only thing that you practice in the fall, this along with your marching band music. Make sure that you're working on your sound through long tones and all the other stuff that you can find in that video that I have on improving saxophone sound. Make sure that you're working on scales. Make sure that you're working on other etudes besides these. Make sure that you're working on repertoire, not just whatever you plan on playing for solo and ensemble. If you isolate yourself too much to just a couple things that you have to do through the year, you're not gonna grow as much as you could. If you have any questions, comments, anything, please get a hold of me, andrew.allen at mwsu.edu. Get a hold of me through my website, allensax.com. I wanna hear from you, just let me know. I look forward to talking to you, meeting with you guys later. Well, good luck.